Hello everyone, uh, this is Peter Bauer again, and welcome to Pete's Lab uh, for another one of our short lectures, vignettes, on subjects related to brownfields and groundwater. This uh, particular demonstration uh, is a simple demonstration, but it does take several weeks to follow it along and um, see everything that needs to be seen. But again, it's uh, basic sort of overarching subject material is just particles, particles in the environment. And I have here in this beaker a pile of particles. Uh, you might call it a dirt, uh, a sediment. Uh, I can see some little uh, granules in there, certainly a lot of sand. And then I see some much, much finer uh, material. Uh, uh, so. It's a collection of uh, very small gravel and then sand and mud. Uh, in this four liter beaker, I have uh, approximately two liters of uh, water. And uh, all I'm going to do is uh, to dump the uh, sediment here into the water and then stir it and talk as we're doing it. So let's just get started by Dumping. Oh, look at that. You can see some, some of the particles, in fact, are, um, are very small. If I stir this like this, you can see, I don't know whether you can or not, but there is, you can see some um, dust, we might call it, uh, particles that have uh, enough energy in the, uh, just by the air currents to move out of the beaker and into the environment. So those are very fine particles indeed. And let's see if uh, oh, we can see a lot more of those uh, very fine particles. Well, we can see already that the uh, water has become dirty or muddy. And I have my trusty spoon here and I'm beginning to stir the particles. But what's important here and we'll show you some close-ups of this uh, in a second, is to carefully note uh, how I'm going to stir this. And um, right now I'm just uh, moving the particles ar around, uh, making sure that the particles disaggregate, that is any, that is, any clumps of particles um, have fallen apart and all the particles are loose and independent and I'm just going to say that that's been achieved. Okay, so the basic part of this experiment is uh, started by stirring the sediment in this water very, very uh, rapidly, uh, adding a lot of energy uh, to this system to make sure that all the particles are off the bottom and up into the uh, water in suspension before I stop stirring. Because what I'm going to do is then stop stirring and then you can imagine what's going to happen. The particles are going to, be going to begin to settle to the bottom. The question is which ones will settle first, if any, and how long will it take? I'm also going to stir this in a circular fashion very rapidly, and I will create a vortex, a spinning vortex, kind of like a, the inside of a tornado uh, in here. That also will play a role in what we see later on. So here we go. I am now stirring. Okay, we're getting a nice vortex forming. I can still feel that there's some sediment at the bottom. There's some resistance. But as I stir this faster and faster, that resistance is disappearing. And now I think all the particles are off the bottom. And we can stop stirring. We just simply watch as the water spins and spins and spins and begins to slow down. On the top, we now have a foam 
that has uh, developed. Well, the water has, it's still slowly, slowly rotating, but it's nearly come to a stop. Uh, some of the foam has now cleared to the edges. Uh, there is a little chunk of foam that's still in the center that's floating around. And what else do we see here? Well, number one, we can see that there are a number of particles that are floating, which indicates that these particles are uh, likely to be less dense than water and perhaps uh, pieces of organic matter, pieces of wood or leaf or something like that that is floating. Uh, that would be consistent with the foam. Uh, what is uh, uh, causing the foam to develop? Well, this is pretty much like your um, bathtub soaps uh, and the bubble baths that you have uh, at home. Uh, here you have a, an organic material uh, that will float on the surface of the water and when you agitate the water uh, you stir in air into these little films of organic matter and you create bubbles. So in the same way there must be some organic um, materials uh, in the sediment and uh, some of these organic materials dissolve in the water creating a film uh, at the surface and when I agitated the water the way I did I was able to entrain air create some bubbles uh, which um, accumulated at the top uh, they seem to be disappearing we also can see some pieces of sediment that have been uh, left uh, on the side of the beaker uh, this showing us the height uh, of our little uh, water tornado when we were uh, stirring. So lots of little pieces of evidence um, are in the beaker to be seen and observed and that's going to be one of the tasks over the next month uh, is to carefully watch and monitor uh, this beaker to see what happens, see how long it takes for particles to finally uh, settle to the bottom. Even now, uh, several minutes after we stopped stirring, we can see a lighter zone here that has begun to develop as the particles, the larger particles, have begun to settle to the bottom. And we can see a uh, lighter colored zone that's uh, slowly developing and uh, expanding. But it too is still dirty, so there are particles in there as well. And the question will be how long before all the particles settle to the bottom or will in fact all the particles actually uh, settle to the bottom. This image was taken a few days after stirring was stopped. The water level is at about 2,150 milliliters. The foam at the top has dissipated, though you can still see some at the edges. The top inch of the water column shows less sediment in suspension than the water deeper down fine sediment is still slowly settling. At the bottom distinct layers can be seen. A lighter beige sandy layer with small granules is at the bottom. A finer darker brown silty layer is in the middle and a very thin, if you look closely, a lighter layer of clay has formed at the top of the sediment. The total volume of the sediment is just over 500 milliliters. We can apply Steno's law of super, laws of superposition and understand that the sandy layer is the oldest, being at the bottom with successively younger layers above it. The gravelly sand and then the silt were deposited very quickly within minutes after stirring was stopped. The clay layer has taken a few days to form and is still forming. This image was taken a few more days later. The water level has dropped via evaporation by 100 milliliters to about 2,050 milliliters. The water column has become clearer but still contains clay in suspension. Note the dark particle of organic matter just to the right of the 500 milliliter mark. This is sitting on top of the clay layer. How did this get there? Just after stirring was stopped, this particle of organic matter was floating on the surface with all the foam. It remained there for a few days, but when it became waterlogged, it sank and because of its position was deposited after the very first uh, of the thin layer of clay. The next image shows that the water level is now down to 1,800 milliliters. Another week has gone by. 
The water column has become clearer and a hill of sediment higher in the center and less thick at the edges is discernible through the haze. Some clay is still in suspension. In this image, the water level has now fallen to 1,450 milliliters. Another week has elapsed. The hill of sediment at the bottom can be clearly seen now and the water column has become clearer, but still some of the finest clay remains in suspension. After another week, the water level has dropped to just under 1,000 milliliters. Prior stands or levels of water are clearly evident on the side of the beaker as thin lines of dried sediment. Two weeks later, the water level has fallen to about 700 milliliters. This image was taken from above, looking down on the sediment hill. The hill is barely covered with water and is ready to be exposed. A few days later, the hill is just exposed. The shoreline can be seen circling the volcano like hill. This image was taken at the same time as the previous image, but from the side. Some water still remains. The next image shows that all the water has evaporated and mud cracks have begun to form in the drying clay. The mud cracks at the top have begun to pull back and curl away from the top of the hill. In this image, the mud cracks have fully formed, producing a dramatic volcano-like structure. They have curled back from the top of the hill, exposing the sand underneath. The mud cracks themselves can be seen to consist of a thin layer of clay and then silt and then sand attached at the bottom.